We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or those of you joining us live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. It's our pleasure to provide this very special online worship experience today. Please share your comments throughout the service and please share the link with others after the service for their benefit as well. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you so much for joining us for the CBS Family Service on this third Sunday in the month of November 2023. I'll be your moderator. My name is Grace Mutiso, and allow me at this time to invite the CBS worship team to join us for a time of praise and worship. We thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace, Lord, for your love that you have bestowed on us, O oh God. We have come to say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord.
Shukuru, Bengira Sijui, Ila Hili Bwan, Mezu wa umeni tendea. Bana, Meru di tena, Yesu, Na kushukuru, Bengira Sijui, Ila Mimi Bwan, Bado ila natambua Thamani ya hili moja uli loli tenda Wale wengine kenda Mimi sijui Ila natajua kwa ngu metenda Wengine sijui Ila mimi buwana Najua ume mitendea Mutuku kufa Thank you so much, CBS Worship Team, for that great time in the presence of the Lord in worship. Please don't go away. There is more worship coming right after this sermon. So today, we are joined by the presiding Bishop of Christ is the Answer Ministries, Bishop Calisto Dede, as he takes us through the second message in our series entitled, A Christian Reflection on the Palestine Crisis. Now, this series gives us an opportunity to know how to pray here at SITAM for the resolution of the conflict in the Middle East. Well, it's now time to hear our speaker for today. Help me welcome our presiding bishop right here at Christ is the Answer Ministries, Reverend Callisto Odede. Remember, our hashtag for today is hashtag in his presence, hashtag covenant relationship. Good morning. Uh, I trust that uh, the Lord has continued to take care of you. I'm so glad that you could join us again this morning as we look together to God's word. Let's turn to the Lord's word as we look at uh, the book of Romans uh, chapter 9. I want to read verse 1 up to verse 8. Romans uh, chapter 9, verse 1 through verse 8. This is what the Bible says. I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing grief in my heart for I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ, 
for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom belongs the adoption as sons and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the temple service and the promises, whose are the fathers and from whom is the Christ according to the flesh, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For they are not all Israel who are descendants from Israelites, from Israel. Neither are they all children because they are Abraham's descendants. But through Isaac, your descendants will be named. That is, it is not the children of the flesh who are children of God, but the children of the promise are regarded as descendants of Abraham. We've been reflecting on the subject, uh, Christian reflection on the Palestinian crisis. The crisis that started on the 7th of October when a mass uh, military wing attacked Israel, which escalated, uh, resulting in the death of close to 11,000 uh, Palestinians, uh, 1,500 Jewish people as well mainly brought about by contentions that have been historical, going all the way uh, to uh, 1947, the two-state uh, situation, should we have two, the settlement uh, of uh, uh, the Israelis on occupied land, Jerusalem, uh, whether it should belong to the Palestinians or to the Israelis, the refugee situation of uh, uh, millions of 5.6 million Palestinians uh, and uh, where they should be resettled. Now, all these uh, have become issues that is finding uh, expression even through the church, uh, sections of the church. And so last uh, Sunday, we looked at the blessings of Abraham, whether it is ethnic or universal. And today, we want to look at the covenant relationship with God, whether there is continuity or discontinuity as we examine the word of the Lord together. Allow me to pick up some background issues that I think will be pertinent for us, especially as Christians, when we reflect on these matters. The anti-Semitism that is the hatred for the Jewish people of Hitler, led to the extermination of five million Jewish people on what was called the Holocaust. But Hitler was motivated by some theologians who propagated the notion that the pure white race, what he called the Aryan race, was actually the chosen people of God. Not only were they the chosen people of God, but they were more superior than any other race in the entire world. Eight years before Hitler came to power, he had written in his book, Mein Kampf, and he wrote and said, every manifestation of human culture, every product of art, science and technical skill, which we see before our eyes today, is almost exclusively the product of the Aryan creative power. This, we know, is not true. For while the Aryan race was still living in caves, the Egyptian civilization was already thriving with technologies which have baffled the world up to date. We know that hieroglyphics, the writing of the Egyptians, was already in operation long before the Aryan race became a prominent race at all. This led him, that is Hitler, to develop a phobia and a hatred for the Jewish people, in which he even boasted that getting rid of the Jewish people, he would be actually acting on behalf of the Almighty God. He then used certain writings of certain Christian theologians in order to propagate the issue that the Hebrew, the Jewish people, should be exterminated, resulting in the death of a close to 5 million Jewish people. The acts of the Nazis were only superseded by the massacres that resulted in close to 10 million Africans dying in the Congo under the rule of King Leopold II of Belgium. 
Again, sections of the church gave the Belgian government the theological and moral vehicle to commit this heinous act. We are only glad that belatedly the section of the church have more recently repented of the atrocities that were committed in their names on the platform that they had offered to King Leopold II of Belgium. Perhaps uh, we need to mention also more recently the Rwandan genocide and the fact that sections of the church did participate in the genocide that resulted in the killing of thousands of people. Close to one million people lost their lives. And should I not also mention the South African government uh, which developed the system of apartheid that discriminated against the people of color in their own country and led to imprisonment, alienation, and unimaginable acts of cruelty. The unfortunate thing is that both the theological institution and sections of the church gave the government the theological basis that they used to commit all these atrocities. We are only consoled again that more recently, these sections of the church have repented of their deception and complicity in the injustice which took place. The United Nations Convention came up with the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide Convention in 1948, which states like this, having intent to destroy in whole or in part, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group as such is actually referred to as genocide. All the groups that I have mentioned before, whether we are talking of uh, German uh, Nazis committing uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, Holocaust, whether we are talking of Rwanda, whether we are talking of Leopold, Senga, Leopold II, whether we are talking of the South African government and apartheid, all these actually violated these sections of the United Nations requirement. But sadly, it is the church that was partly part of these in coming out to support uh, some of these sections. How does the current situation in Palestine measure up with the UN definition of genocide? Are there a group of people who are being singled out, who seemingly are being exterminated? Are there a group of people who are being forcefully evicted and sent out of their homes? Are there a group of people who are becoming landless and homeless? Are there children who are dying? Are there women who are dying? Are there hospitals which are being bombed? Now, if we could not condone and feel bad by the fact that the Nazis actually committed atrocities against the Jewish people, how then can we condone the Jewish government when they are committing the same atrocity on other people, the Palestinian government, especially supported by sections of the church? It is therefore important that we re-examine our position as a church and where necessary seek repentance for the complicity that we have had in some of the evils that have been committed in the world today. The church should form a community of hope rather than an aggravating the situation the church should embark on how to reconcile and bring peace rather than sharing up one wing that is committing atrocity. The church should not condone unnecessary violence that is bringing about death. Christian Zionism that we made reference to last time is actually uh, this special group who believe that the Jewish people are special chosen people of God with unique relationship with God and that relationship is outside the church and therefore continuing from the Old Testament economy rather than discontinued with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They go on to emphasize that the Old Testament of God with Israel continues on into the New Testament with the church now running a parallel to 
uh, Israel or the Jewish people. One running with the old covenant uh, and the other one running with the new covenant. Uh, one emphasizing continuity and the other one bringing out the, uh, the, the aspect uh, of discontinuity with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This has led to sections of the church adopting a two-way relationship with God. The Old Testament covenant for Israel. The New Testament grace and faith for the church. In this, many would think then that the status of Israel is superior to that of the church. That the role of Israel supersedes that of the church. That the primary purpose of the church is actually to bless and continue cheering on Israel. That the church is therefore a parenthesis that has been brought in within the wider perspective of Israel. And though Israel may for now seem to be outside the, uh, 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 the faith and rejecting some of the tenets of the faith, finally they will be brought in. Individuals like Ivan, Derby, Scofield, didn't we grow up with that? Uh, carrying the big Scofield Bible that emphasized on dispensationalism, but also emphasized on the old covenant continuing with the children of Israel. Some of us grew up on this. So, we need to examine whether there is true continuity or discontinuity. Oh, perhaps I need to mention here that some of these ideas seem to be contrary to the teachings of the New Testament that seems to emphasize relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ as the criteria for salvation and being called the people of God. The apostle Peter preaching to a group at, in Acts chapter 3, verse 23, points out and declares as he assures the Jewish people that anyone who does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ will be cut off from among the people of God. Not necessarily anyone who discontinues the relationship through the old covenant, but anyone who does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christians need to understand the words of the Apostle Peter that God does not play favoritism. He has come and revealed himself through the Lord Jesus Christ and individuals need to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ through his revelation on the cross. In the patristic era, the early church fathers, Irenaeus, one of the early church fathers, introduced the idea of covenants because he was emphasizing more like a pre a, a, a premillennialism that emphasized dispensation that God works in people in different epochs, in different time periods, with different models and different times. He introduced the idea of covenant. The word used for covenant under normal circumstances should be translated as cutting a covenant. In other words, because it was based mainly on the shedding of the blood when people had a covenantal relationship with God. While covenants are often the initiative of God, this has given the impression that covenants are unconditional and is basically because of God's choice or elections regardless of what the people would do. A closer look at several covenants in the Old Testament would point out to us that there were conditions that were attached to the covenants that God would give the promises but he would say this would be fulfilled if my people would obey me, would walk according to my word. It requires in its accomplishment the cooperation and the obedience of the people of God. If they did not, we find that not only the people were breaking the covenant, God himself would sometimes break the covenant with generations who did not continue to walk in his ways. Isaiah 33 verse 8, Jeremiah 14 verse 21, Ezekiel 16 verse 59, all point out to us. We also need to understand 
that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ introduces a new covenant to us. A covenant that the writer of the book of Hebrews points out to us in chapter 7 of the book of Hebrews, verse 20 through verse 22. And he declares that the covenant is much more superior than the old covenant. A better covenant, the covenant of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. He says the same thing in chapter 8, verse 6 as well. So the old and the new covenant differs in their administration. One can then say that the new has superseded the old and that they are not running parallel. Rather, there is a discontinuity between the covenants. Allow me then to just point out to us from the passage before us, a reflection from Paul. He brings out a number of issues that perhaps uh, uh, would be worthy to mention to our viewers today. Please take time to read the book of Romans chapter 9, chapter 10, and chapter 11. Please take time to read the book of Galatians chapter 3. Please take time to read the book of Hebrews chapter 7 and chapter 8. I say this because we do not have time to cover all these large portions of scriptures, all of them that delve deeply into the issues of the covenant and try to bring out important elements for our reflections. Paul, writing to the Romans, points out the distinctive privileges of the Jewish people in verse 1 to verse 5 of the book of Romans chapter 9. He first points out that he's carrying a burden. He's carrying a burden about his community, the Jewish people. In his heart, he wishes that he himself were actually separated and accursed from the Lord Jesus Christ so that they, the Jewish people, would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We see in this portion, Paul bringing out an aspect where he is not contented with the fact that the Jewish people do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, he is not saying, let them continue on in their Judaism. It is okay that we'll be, uh, they, they, they will be able to experience God in that direction. He is groaning, he is weeping, he is wailing, he is wishing that he himself were cast so that the Jewish people will come to an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I do think this is an attitude that we as Christians ought to adopt, that we need to be praying for the Jewish people. We need to be praying for the Israelis and groaning on their behalf that they would come to a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ than becoming contented that they are okay the way they are because of the Old Testament economy. Paul is groaning and desiring that it would be changed. You see, the Holy Spirit brings out an aspect here in the fact that the Jewish people also needed to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul uses a strong word that he wishes that he himself were anathema. He himself, himself was actually a cast so that he would come, the Jewish people would come to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees his countrymen as excluded, but on what ground? They are excluded on the ground of unbelief. They have not captured and believed the tenets of the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result of this, he sees them as a lost community who have no hope at all and a people who need to be redeemed. This truly is a burden for an intercessor. And can you hear Moses playing the role of an intercessor? In Exodus 33, 32, verse 31 through 33, he returns to God and he says, Alas, these people have committed a great sin and they have made a, a God out of gold for themselves. But now, if you will not forgive them, if not, please blot out my name from the book that you have written. 
can you hear Nehemiah in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 6 through 8 groaning and crying out again on behalf of the children of Israel as he says we our fathers have sinned Lord have mercy on us. Can you hear Daniel in chapter 9, verse 3 through 9, again groaning for the children of Israel, not contented with the direction they are going, saying, we, our children and our father, we have sinned. God, have mercy on us. The invitation that we have is an invitation to become intercessors for Israel, but intercessors are who are not only praying for their inheritance of the land, in intercessors, who are not just praying for their victory in war with Palestine, intercessors, who are not just praying for their dominance against their neighbors, but intercessors who are calling on God for their salvation, that they may be redeemed, that they may come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. He points out their inventory of privileges. To them belongs the adoption. They were adopted by God. To them belongs the glory and the appearance on the Mount Sinai when God came down. To them belongs the covenant that they were given, the Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, the Davidic covenant, the new covenant in, uh, through Jeremiah. To them belongs this. To them belongs the promises that God has given. To them belongs the giving of the law. To them belongs the service in the tabernacle and in the temple. To them belongs the, the forefathers, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and other significant fathers. All of these, uh, he finally climax uh, of his list by saying, even to them belongs the stock of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he came through Israel what we pointed out last Sunday, the fulfillment of Abrahamic uh, uh, blessings, uh, that it is both uh, 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 in terms of being a personal, national, but universal in terms of the fulfillment in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when he mentions this, Paul almost burst out in a kind of benediction in expressing Christ. He is Lord of all and he is God most blessed forever, man, he says. This is an amazing statement that confirms the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ. But his anguish and pain is that the children of Israel, although having all these distinctives, all these blessings, all these favors from their background, have not come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wishes that they would come to know and experience the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about their distinguished position. Israel versus true Israel. Verse 9, uh, verse 6 of chapter 9 of the book of Romans. He says, but it is not as though the word of God has failed. For they are not all Israel who are descendants from Israel. Paul points out that it is not the word of God that has failed. It is not at all useless. It is not water that has passed uh, under the bridge. It is not uh, uh, milk that has been spilled. The promises that God gave in regards to Israel are not in vain. He points out that they are not all Israel who are descended from Israel. They are not all Israel who are physically descended from Israel. Whether they came from Abraham or Isaac or Jacob, this is a reference to the fact that it's not the children of the flesh that are called the true Israel. He brings out an aspect that separates the genuine Israel from the ethnic Israel, where the genuine Israel are a community of people who have come to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, as opposed to the ethnic Israel who are more the children of the flesh rather than the children of the promise. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, in these, Paul includes even the, Roman, even, even the Romans. He includes even the, 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 the children of the Gentiles that those who would put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ becomes the genuine community who are not necessarily so by an act of circumcision which is external, but who have become so by an act of circumcision of the heart. They are the genuine Israel, the children that God is talking about. It is important, therefore, for us to note that Paul and the New Testament does not emphasize 
ethnic Israel community in terms of relationship with God. That Paul and the New Testament seems to emphasize a new community of those who have put their faith in God and he calls them the new Israel. What about the ethnic Israel? When we read chapter 11 of the book of Romans, Paul points out to us that there will be a remnant in Israel then who will become saved. So not all, but only those who would put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he refers to in chapter 11 of the book of Romans as the remnant of Israel. It is therefore pertinent and important for us that we examine some of the positions and theological grounds that we have been holding in attempting to support ethnic Israel when they are involved in what I can only call ethnic cleansing. It is important for us to note that the scripture puts them on a, on, on, on a place where they ought also to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ through the exercise of faith. It is important for us, therefore, not only to pray for them, to witness to them, and to challenge them when they are committing atrocities and not to presume that because they hold on to the old covenant, as I've already shown us, that they will be okay with God. God has exercised this continuity with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and now brings out a new covenant, a covenant of relationship as we walk and as we relate to the Lord Jesus Christ in the coming days. And I pray that you too as an individual would begin to pray with wisdom and with knowledge, acknowledging the fact that God is inviting you and inviting us to continue commending this nation and this people praying for both the Palestinians and praying for the Israelis that peace would prevail and that they would come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow me to read for us from a comment here from verse 14. What then shall we say? There is no injustice with God. Is there? May it never be. The question therefore would arise whether God is committing an injustice when dealing with the children of Israel. Our comment is, uh, no, God is sovereign. The question is, is God committing an injustice by dealing with the rest of the community and the people? No, our God is sovereign. And in his sovereign will, he has given the Israelites the book, the prophets. He has given them the Lord Jesus Christ, the benefits. His intention was that they would come to know Jesus as Lord. And yet, majority of them have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, God is not unjust in the way he's dealing with us. But invites us all to come to that position where we will know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, including the Jewish people. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you and bless you for the invitation that you have given to us, that we'll walk with you and love you and know you. And we pray that this would be extended to the Palestinians, this would be extended to the Jewish people, that they too would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And we pray for the wider church that you would give us sensitivity to your word, that where we have erred, Lord, we would repent and come back to the knowledge of the truth, and that we would step out, O oh God, to affirm your word, that you are a God of covenant, and yet you have reintroduced to us the covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. May you be honored and may you be glorified. For we come to you based purely on the grounds of the death of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We want to encourage you to continue tuning in. Next Sunday, I will be looking at the sensitive subject of the whole issue of the land. Whose land is it? Is the holy land really holy? We will be looking at that next Sunday. And God richly bless you. Thank you so much, Bishop Odede, for such a powerful and inspiring lesson and observation from your sermon. Please, for you watching us on Hope TV, following us uh, online, 
on Hope FM Live, Hope TV Kenya, and Sitam Church Online. Please ensure that you share your takeaway on the chat section, uh, what you've been able to pick from today's sermon. But right now, allow me to invite back the CBS worship team to take us through another session of worshiping our God. <music>
Thank you so much, CBS Worship Team. Now it's time to give. Shall we pray together? Father, we are grateful because you've given us so much every single day, the gift of life, the gift of resources. And right now, we commit ourselves to you as we bring back just a few of what you've given us back to you. We pray that you'll be able to bless our giving in Jesus' name. And may this giving be used in the furtherance of your kingdom. We also remember those who do not have that, Lord, you'll bless the work of their hands so that next time they'll be able to give back to you. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Allow me to invite you to watch and listen to this clip with instructions on how to give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at SIDM. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITEM payable numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 011-280-617-639-0. The SWIFT code K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. We are so glad that you're still with us at this point. Allow me to bring to us some few notices. Remember, on Wednesday at 6 p.m., we'll be right here with a live prayer service when you can send in your prayer request and our pastors will be bringing them before the Lord in a time of prayer. We also encourage you to keep tweeting and posting today's special message. And of course, remember to use the hashtag, hashtag in his presence, hashtag covenant relationship. Also, remember to use the annual Bible study guide for this week for the further study on our theme. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. Please let us know by getting in touch with us via WhatsApp number 0728 221 again, 0728 221 on your screen. The number actually is right at the bottom of your screen. And for you listening to us on radio, again, the number is 0728 221 and be sure to follow up with you this coming week. Thank you so much for tuning in today's CBS Family Service. I've been your moderator, Grace Mutiso. Wish you a blessed time, but let's say the words of the grace as we wrap it up. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless and have a fruitful week ahead.